So the topic is tongue thrusting from oral habits. Now what is tongue thrusting? So it is a common name of an oral myofunctional disorder and it is a dysfunctional muscle pattern in which the tongue it protrudes anteriorly or laterally during swallowing or during speech and while the tongue is at rest. So this is nothing but tongue thrusting. Now what is the definition of tongue thrusting? So it was defined by Tule in 1969 and it states it as the forward movement of the tongue tip. So there is this forward movement of the tongue tip between the teeth. So between your anterior teeth, it is moved forwardly to meet the lower lip during deglutition and in the sounds of speech so that the tongue it becomes interdental. So this is the definition which was given by Tully in 1969. Now what is the classification of it? So it is classified into two forms. So first classification is it is divided. So it is classified as physiological, habitual, functional and anatomic. Physiological is basically this comprises of the normal tongue thrust swallow of infancy. Now what is this infancy swallow? So I will tell you about it. What is that infantile swallow? Then physiological is it is the normal tongue thrust swallow of infancy. The next is the habitual. So the tongue thrust swallow it is present as a habit even after the correction of the malocclusion. Then the functional. In functional the tongue thrust mechanism it is an adaptive behavior which is developed to achieve the oral seal. And in anatomic so the person having enlarged tongue can have an anterior tongue pressure and this is the classification of it now the next classification so it was given by James and Townsend so this is the classification which was given by them so it is classified as type 1 type 2 type 3 and type 4 so type 1 is a non deforming tongue thrust type 2 is a deforming anterior tongue thrust type 3 is deforming lateral tongue thrust and type 4 is deforming anterior and lateral tongue thrust. So it is basically combination of this both. So anterior tongue thrust is divided again into three subgroups. So sub first subgroup is it is the anterior open bite. Then there is this associated procumbency of the anterior teeth. So what is this procumbency? So basically it is nothing but the flaring of your anterior maxillary teeth. So it is associated with the flaring of the anterior teeth. Then there is association with the posterior cross bite. So these all are the three subgroups of type 2. Now type 3 is again divided into three subgroups. So first is posterior open bite. The next one is posterior cross bite. And third one is deep over bite. Now type 4 is divided into three subgroups. So first is anterior and posterior open bite. Then there is associated procumbency of the anterior teeth. And last is the associated posterior cross bite. So this is the classification which was given. Now the etiology. So first etiological factor is retained infantile swallow. Now what is normal infantile So during this swallow, the tongue it lies between the gum pads and the maxilla and it is stabilized by the contraction of the facial muscles, especially the buxirator. So this type of pattern, it disappears on the eruption of the buccal teeth of the primary dentition. And this is known as retained infantile swallow. So this is basically the normal infantile swallow. But when this infantile swallow it is retained over time, it leads to tongue thrust. Next is if there is upper respiratory tract infection, there can be neurological disturbances, then there can be functional adaptability to the transient change in anatomy. So if the person is adaptable to the change in anatomy, because now the anatomy, it changes when the patient, he has primary teeth and when he has permanent teeth. So basically, if there is this functional adaptability, then it can lead to tongue thrust. The next is the feeding patterns. The sixth one is the it is induced due to oral other oral habits and other oral habits can be thumb sucking. This act of thumb sucking it depresses the tongue and it keeps the teeth apart. So one can suspect that it also induces malfunctions of the tongue. So thumb sucking can also be an ideological factor for tongue thrusting. Next is hereditary. So now this is the genetical factors. If there is genetical factors, then it can lead to tongue thrusting. The next is the tongue size. So if there is macroglossia or microglossia, if the tongue is larger in size or if it is smaller in size. So this can be the ideological factor for tongue thrusting. So in this situations, the tongue, it is inadequate to fill the oral space and it can result in the forward thrusting. The next ideological factor is gap filling tendency. Now what is this gap filling tendency? So any space which is present around the dental arches, which is not occupied by teeth, will tend to be filled by the tongue. The next ideological factor is oral trauma. 
So when a traumatic condition it persists for a sufficient time, it effects can cause changes in the deglutition pattern. Next is sleeping habits. So patient who sleep on their back on a low pillow and with the mouth open, the tongue rests in the mandible arch and it moves forward against the teeth during swallowing. And this can be the etiological factor. And the next is the soft diet. So oral laxity, it is encouraged with resulting underdevelopment of the oral functions, oral muscles. Now, what are the clinical manifestations? So it depends upon the intensity, duration, frequency and the type of it. So type is nothing but the if it is lateral or anterior tongue So the first is the lip posture. So the lip separation, it is greater. The lips, they are separated greatly and there is a consistent finding both at rest and at function. So you'll find this consistent, consistently at rest and if it's in function. So you'll see this lip separation. The next one is the mandibular movement. So the mandibular movements, they're more erratic and there are number of correlation can be found between the movement of the tongue tip and the mandible itself. So the average path is upward and backward with the tongue moving forward. So this is the mandibular movement. The speech, they have various speech disorders such as sibilant distortion, lisping, problems in articulation. So they have like this patients of tongue thrust, they have many problems with speech. Next is the facial form. So usually the facial form is a dolicocephalic. There is increased lower anterior facial height and the patient he looks expressionless. These are the extraoral features. Now what are the intraoral? So first is the tongue movement. So the tongue movement it is jerky and it is inconsistent. They are also irregular from one swallow to another. The chin point it is found to be posteriorly. Now what is the tongue posture? So tongue tip is lower. So because of the anterior open bite and because of the longer period of the time which is required for the tongue tip to move from the rest to swallowing. So because of this, there is a longer time which is required for the tongue tip to move from rest to swallowing. The, there is the presence of anterior open bite. Now malocclusions, the features which are pertaining to maxilla are there is proclination of the maxillary anterior which results in increase in the overjet. So there is generalized spacing and the maxillary arch, it is constricted. Now what are the features which are pertaining to the mandible? So there is retroclination or proclination of the mandibular teeth depending on which type it is. Then intermaxillary relationship is anterior or posterior open bite which is based on the posture of the tongue. So there can be anterior or posterior open bite. Then there can be posterior teeth cross bite. And in simple thrust tongue thrust, it exhibits good intercuspation of the posterior teeth in contrast to complex tongue thrusting habits. Moving on towards the diagnosis part, how are you going to diagnose the case? So first is history taking. So it includes various questions, for example, the swallow pattern of siblings and parents to see whether it is genetic. Then regarding the upper respiratory tract infection, sucking habits, etc. So you're going to exclude all the reasons like we have seen the all etiological factors. So you're excluding them through the histories. Then next is examination. So you're going to check for the size, shape and movement of the tongue. Then you're going to observe the tongue position while the mandible is in a rest position. Then you're going to observe the tongue during various swallows like conscious swallow, then command swallow of saliva, water. Command swallow is you're asking them to swallow the water. So basically you're just giving them the water and you're asking them to swallow the water and then you're seeing it. You're observing how the swallow pattern is. Then the conscious swallow during mastication. The palpatory examination is place water beneath the patient's step and ask him to swallow. If there is marked contraction of the lips and facial muscles, so it means there is this tongue thrusting. Then place hand over the temporalis muscle and ask the patient to swallow. So there is no temporalis contraction in the cases of tongue thrusting habits. Hold the lower lip and ask the patient to swallow. The patient, he cannot complete the swallow in that case. So it means the patient, he has tongue thrusting habit. So these are the clinical features in short. So for simple, if it is a simple tongue thrusting, you'll see there is a normal tooth contact which is present in the posterior region and there is anterior open bite, contraction of the lips, mentalis muscle and the mandibular elevator. So this is about simple tongue thrust. Now what is complex tongue thrust? So in complex tongue thrust, you'll see generalized open bite like you'll see posterior open bite too. Then there is absence of the contraction of the lip and the oral muscle and the teeth contact in the occlusion. So this is the difference between simple tongue thrust and complex tongue thrust. Now the lateral tongue thrust is posterior open bite with tongue thrusting laterally. So if there is a space which is present, for example, if the space it is present 
towards the lateral side of your teeth for example it is present between canines and premolars so that is nothing but the lateral tongue thrust so your tongue it is going toward that side so that is the lateral tongue thrust now what are the other features so there can be proclination of the anterior teeth anterior open bite midline diastema and posterior cross bite so these all are the clinical features of tongue thrusting habits now moving on towards the last part of it that is the treatment consideration so first you are going to see the age in age it self corrects by 8 to 9 years of the age it occurs because of an improved muscular balance during swallowing so basically it's like it self corrects by the age of 8 to 9 years and you are going to see if there is presence or absence of associated manifestation there is this malocclusions with it but no speech problems so orthodontic correction is done in that cases if there is no speech problem but only malocclusions are seen if there are speech defects then you're going to give the speech therapy and you're going to see if it is associated with other oral habits like thumb sucking so other habit it should be treated first and then you are treating tongue thrusting habit so now the treatment modalities is first is the myofunctional exercise now what is this myofunctional exercise or myofunctional therapy so in this gardleider he proposed this method in which the patient can be guided regarding the correct posture of the tongue during swallowing so in this you are guiding the patient for the correct posture of the tongue during swallowing by various exercise like you are asking the child to place the tip of the tongue in the rugae area for 5 minutes and then asking him to swallow so this is nothing but the myofunctional exercise the next one can be orthodontic elastics and sugarless fruit drop exercise so in orthodontic elastic to so the tongue tip it is held against the palate using a orthodontic elastic and a sugarless fruit drop so this is nothing but the next therapy which can be done and there's one more lemon candy exercise so what is this instead of the elastic a lemon candy it is put on the tongue tip so the patient is asked to hold the candy against the palate by the tongue tip and then asking the child to swallow so this is the lemon candy exercise the next exercise is forest exercise so it includes identifying the spot salivating and squeezing the spot and solving so this is the forex exercise basically it is like this includes identifying the spot salivating then squeezing the spot and solving so using the tongue the spot is identified the tongue tip is pressed against the spot and the child is asked to swallow keeping the tongue at the same spot so this is nothing but the forex exercise now other exercises are the child is asked to perform a series of exercise such as whistling reciting the count from 60 to 69 gargling yawning etc to tone the respective muscle so these all are other exercises then there are lip exercises so tug of war and a button pull exercises done for the lip exercises so a string it is tied to two buttons one of the button it is placed between the lips of the patient while the other it is held by the patient outside so the outer button it is pulled outward and at the same time the inside button is resisting the force thereby strengthening the lips on both the aspects so the next one is the subconscious therapy so once the voluntary swallowing pattern it is acquired the patient he proceeds to subconscious therapy that is sub liminal therapy in which the patient is asked to place a reminder sign or auto suggestion which requires the patient to give self instructions like repeat six times i will swallow correctly all night long for 10 nights so this is nothing but subconscious therapy and the next one is the mechanotherapy so both fixed and removable appliances can be fabricated the appliances it reeducates the tongue so that the dorsum of the tongue it approximates the palatal wall and the tip of the tongue it contacts the palatal rugae so some of them are this pre orthodontic trainer for myofunctional training then there is nans palatal arch appliances then there are tongue grips oral screen modification of holly's appliances then there are the speech therapy if the patient he have speech problem so there is speech therapy in which train correct positioning of the tongue it is not indicated before 8 years of age as we have seen it is self correcting if the patient is 8 to 9 years of age the child he is asked to pronounce word beginning with s the mechanical therapy we have seen all this holly's then tongue crib and etc then there is oral screen then there is surgical treatment so if there is retained infantile swallow behavior is difficult and it often consists of orthognathic surgical procedure so if it is not treatable by all these treatment plans so after that the last option becomes the surgical treatment now there is this new concept that is known as gallula habit 
appliance is used to correct the aberrant tongue habits so it consists a large coffin loop and a lingual arch wire it is a fixed removable type of appliance so now in this the coffin spring it is usually very large it is about a third the width of the entire pallet and it is positioned approximately 8 to 10 mm away from the pallet the lingual arch wire so as we have seen these have so this galela habit appliance it has this coffin loop lingual arch wire so this lingual arch wire it supports a habit bead that is positioned over the posterior third of the incisive papilla so now in this diagram as you can see there is this bead which is present on the posterior third of the incisive papilla so when the patient he swallows they are instructed to wedge their tongue in between the bead and the roof of the mouth so they are also instructed to pull the bead towards the back of the mouth throughout the day the anterior position of the bead which is combined with the patient's exercise of pulling the bead towards the back of the mouth it functions both to retain the tip of the tongue and as a deterrent to aberrant tongue thrusting so this is nothing but a galela habit appliances which is a newer concept which is now introduced and this was it for this video thank you so much